This is section 16.3, number two, and it's the same as last problem. We want to find an F so that this is the gradient of F. So the first thing we have to do is check on whether F is conservative. That is, doesn't F even exist? So once again, we check the mixed partials. So if this is the partial with respect to X, then FXY would be the first partial of this with respect to Y, and that's zero. And then if this is the first partial with respect to y, then fyx would be the mixed partial, and the derivative of this with respect to x is zero. So this checks out because the mixed partials are equal. That means an f does exist that has this as its gradient. So the question is, what is it? Well, here's the trick. We already know that this right here is the first partial for f. So we go fx is equal to x cubed. And then what I imagine is integrating this with respect to x. If I integrate the first partial and I integrate x cubed, of course, I'm going to get f, which will be equal to x to the fourth over 4. The problem is, if when I took the partial of this with respect to x, there could have been a whole y function out here, and it would, would have turned into 0. So instead of adding in a constant for the integral I just took, I'm going to add in a function g which is exclusively a function of y. Okay, now what we do is we say, okay, this is a model of our original function f. Let's take its partial with respect to y, fy. Well, this would be zero, and this would be g prime of y. And the good news is I already know what the partial of f is with respect to y. It's sitting right here. So I just set that equal to negative y to the fourth. And now I know that the first derivative of whatever this function g was that I had to add to this to form f, I know that that's actually equal to negative y to the fourth. So I can integrate. I can get g itself. g of y will be equal to, again, if I take the integral of that, it's going to be negative y to the fifth over 5. Of course, you might think, too, you've got to add on a constant, and strictly speaking, you do. Uh, again, this it would not be incorrect to add this on. But if we're going to then do a definite integral of this, this will just cancel out anyway as a definite integral. So, again, there's no reason to add on that constant. Uh, this will adequately produce that, and so we don't need the constant in order to complete our g of y. Well, there it is. There's our f, then. It's x to the fourth over 4 plus whatever the gy is, and I found that to be negative y to the fifth over 5. Again, strictly speaking, plus c, but we're going to find out for practical purposes that we're never going to need that constant because anytime we're actually going to use this reconstructed function f, we're going to do a definite integral to it. So there it is. In this case, this gradient actually came from a conservative function, and that conservative function was x to the fourth over four minus y to the fifth over five. And if we check it, look at this. If I take this guy's partial with respect to x, I get x cubed. And if I take the partial with respect to y, I get negative y to the fourth. So there it is. You can always check your answer to see that it produces the correct partials.